So that brings us to cash disbursements. Most of our cash disbursements deal with the materials that we figured up here, where we figured out the cost of the materials purchased. So as we've seen from others, probably the January comes from our balance sheet. So we're gonna go look up here. The materials we haven't paid for yet would be our accounts payable. So our accounts payable in December are 6,600. So we're gonna pay those off. And the way I've got it here, I've put it here. There's no right or wrong to which you put first. But that 6,600 is what we pay, bought in December, paid for in January. Like the receivables, the rules for the purchases are just whatever they tell you in the problem. So here they tell you 60, percent are paid for in the month of the purchase and the other 40 percent are paid the next month so looking back up here we bought 29,600 in January and so 60 percent of that we're going to pay for in January um, we bought 19.4 in February, and we're going to pay for 60% of those in February. And then the other 40% of the 29.6 are going to show up in as a February disbursement. So January, we're going to pay for those in February. I'm not going to use that again. So and again, you can kind of check yourself because. These two numbers better add up to what you had up here because you're just paying that 29.6 across two months. Just because we might need it for later, our accounts payable then in February in um, on 2.29, that's going to be the 19.4 times the 40% that's paid in the next month, or 77.60. And again, so this number and this number paid last, paid in the month and paid the next month, better come up to that 19.4, and it does. Then it usually has some other things you pay for other than your accounts payable. So it tells me all my factory overheads variable, my production costs are all paid in the month they're incurred, and then um, my long-term note payable isn't due till 2020, so I don't have any payments on that, and then talk, talks about my depreciation. So my direct labor, it tells me is $3 a bag produced, and my factory overhead is four. We've already got our materials uh, for, uh, accounted for up here. So materials, labor, and overhead. And those would be incurred based on the amount you produce. So I got to go find those numbers. So I've got $3 times the amount you produce. So scroll up here to you don't want pounds, you want the actual bags of chips. So I produced 15.2. My variable factory overhead is my $4 times, I'm just going to scroll up there and find it again, that 15.2. Uh, my fixed SGNA is 95,000, and that's just given here. That takes me to my depreciation. My depreciation is an expense, and it tells me here that it's an expense that's included in this SGNA. It's on the headquarters building, um, but it's not cash. Again, I bought the headquarters building years ago, and that's when um, I, I paid the cash. So remember, these are all disbursements, and so I need to subtract the 15,000 out of the 95. You could have done that in your head and just put 80 in here. That would have been fine, but this is just a way to show you what we're doing. Okay. So if I did everything right as far as um, my, my uh, 
dollar signs. Um, this should then take my February and the 95 is the same and the 15 is the same. Just to make your life miserable, it then said you also pay 5,000 in dividends, but just in February. So I've also got a $5,000 disbursement there. So I need to total these up. Um, I really don't, I could just total all the way down, but I kind of like these totaled up. Um, so we'll total those up. And then our total disbursements, Again, I use the alt equals to get there. Um, are these numbers here? Okay. Once you've got that, then you need a cash budget, and that's pretty easy. We take our cash receipts from this one. We subtract our cash disbursements from the cash disbursements. And the only tricky thing is I've got to find beginning cash. Beginning cash in January, where do you think you find a lot of that January information? Hopefully you thought scroll up because you can't see it from there. Our beginning cash would on January 1's our ending cash December 31. So 52,000 is what shows up here. So, um, so my total Ending cash in January is 798490 Like we did in our inventories, what's my beginning cash in February? And your beginning cash in February is your ending cash in January because you're just kind of running a checkbook. So these numbers you can copy across, but not that first one. So at the end, I've got 149,260. The other thing just to think about, um, if you would do a total of January and February cash, you do need to think a little bit about, go ahead and put the headings in here. My beginning balance in for January and February together has to be January. Then I can uh, go ahead and sum these together. I'll do it kind of the slow way. This plus this. Okay. So then you can sum those and then go up and down if you wanted. You better get the same number as here. What you can't do, what a no-no is, you can't sum those. Um, because beginning January plus beginning February is nonsense. There's no such thing because this is just that number. So your beginning cash is January. Your ending's got to be February. Don't ever do that. That gets really easy what you end up doing, especially since it's your last thing, is just doing something here and you've got garbage. That is just meaningless. So don't do it. But that's your cash budget. I'm going to go ahead and do financial statements, even though um, I'll never have you do those, but I'll do a little video for you just in case.